Okay, now we need to prepare some wood for the stove. Uh, one of my little tricks that I like to do is have a pair of pruners. These are ratcheting pruners where it's got a blade and, and an anvil on there. Uh, I bought these at Home Depot years ago. They may not even sell them or whatnot, but they make preparing little tiny kindling really easy. What you want to do is you want to cut the wood into small bite-sized pieces that will fit inside here. Using a pair of pruners like this, especially ratcheting ones, allows you to make small pellet-sized chunks of wood for a midge like this really quick. You want to make your pieces about an inch long, maybe a little bit shorter, no big deal. Ratcheting pruners are a huge time saver, especially when you get into wood that's like a half inch diameter. The ratcheting pruners go right through. Your wood will fly around a little bit, but that's not too bad. This is much easier than snapping it or breaking it other ways some days. especially. Especially if you don't have a lot of uh, hand strength or some other type of deal like that. Uh, these are a great investment. They lock closed. These are made of plastic with a metal blade. So they're actually very light. You can throw these into a pack and it's no big deal. So anytime you need to make kindling, you can just sit down and snip out a whole bunch of pieces really fast. So this is kind of a, a good tip here, you know, if you feel like carrying something like this. If not, do it the old-fashioned way. This is just about enough wood. You want to fill the can maybe three-quarters of the way full. Once you have your can packed full, uh, I like to put like some real small kindling on top, larger pieces towards the bottom, and then I take a stick Beat it up and peck it down a little bit in there. So you get about three quarters, three quarters tall. Put your can inside the larger can. Drop your gas cowling inside and you can press it a little bit to make sure it's centered. Now for the sake of this video, I put a little bit of charcoal starter fluid inside here. Just soak the wood a little bit because I want to hurry up and get this done because it's really hot out here. Now, take uh, whatever your preferred tinder is or whatever. In this case, you can use a little bit of toilet paper. Also, if you want to soak the wood, say it's a little wet or something like that, uh, a little bit of diesel fuel or dry gas uh, will actually work in here. You know, uh, different types of alcohol and stuff like that. Don't use gasoline or Coleman white gas, anything like that. Uh, diesel fuel is the safest. Uh, diesel fuel will just make the wood combustible. It won't get a big fireball effect out of this when you go to light it. It's really windy out here now, so I have to put something up as a windbreak. Notice, once a stove like this gets going, you see jets of flame coming out of those upper holes inside the can. That's actually the gases from the wood being collected and burned right at the top of this cowling. I'll try and zoom in a little closer.
There we go. Hopefully you guys can see the, uh, the jets inside there. Here's a really good close-up of the jets of flame. You can see right inside these holes in the top of the soup can. Whoa, that's hot. The holes are channels for the collected gas to come out and get burned around the top of the cowling. So basically it's just like a gas stove at home, except you're collecting the gases from the wood. Using wood pellets in a small stove like this, the runtime is about 25 minutes. I've actually boiled uh, pots of water, cooked rice on top of these, and cooked four hamburgers inside of a large iron skillet on top of this. Their only drawback is the natural draft from the air holes. The natural draft of this stove is not really enough to compensate for the wind sometimes. So you notice when the wind dies down, you'll get a really nice flame out of this. Although it's not too bad, you can, you can use them outside in a lot of places. Uh, the flame won't easily blow out. If it does blow out, these stoves produce a lot of smoke and you can take a lighter and relight the gases around the cowling immediately. So just get right in there, relight it, you'll get a little puff and the stove will be back up and operating with no smoke. The commercial versions of these stoves with built-in fans are a lot better. They burn quite a bit cleaner and they will not go out in high winds. As the stove is burning, you can take small pieces of wood and refuel it, but not too many at one, any one given time. Always put small pieces of wood in these stoves. You don't want to have wood sticking up out of the stove. All the wood needs to be below the gas cowling because what this does is the flame shuts off the flow of oxygen to the top of the wood. Basically the stove is creating charcoal as it operates. As the stove operates, you can use a long stick to push down the charcoal inside very carefully so that new pieces of wood can be added. And remember, all the wood has to be about an inch long. Larger pieces will not go in right off the bat. Another close-up shot of the gases coming out of the stove. That's what a properly burning mid should look like. Okay, I'm gonna try a little experiment. I'm gonna try and blow the stove out and then relight it. Okay, there is a midge that's been blown out. To relight the stove, light a little bit of tinder on fire, drop it inside. Now the stove is relit, all the smoke goes away, and we're back up to normal operation. Let's try that again. See how the gases just relight like a stove at home? These stoves will pretty much burn anything. Here's a handful of dry leaves. These stoves will even burn popped popcorn. Here's a shot from the top down showing the gas jets inside. That's what a properly operating mid should look like. Notice how when the wind blows from one side or the other, it'll put out some of the jets, but then they'll just relight again when the wind swings back. If you put too much paper in, or there's a little bit of wet wood inside that hasn't burned yet, or it's kind of burning 
you know, too slow or you really don't see any flames but not a lot of smoke, you can blow gently in here to kind of restart it. Just be careful not to breathe the smoke. This is like a concentrated campfire burning inside a can, and the smoke is really, really bad. All right, once the stove is completely burned out, mine's still a little bit hot, lift your can out. Then your inner burn can. take a look to see what's left. You can see after the burn is all done there's just a small pile of coals left from this can being three quarters full of wood. Uh, there's still a few little coals in there glowing and whatnot but most of it's just kind of powder. So these stoves are pretty efficient at burning everything up. So hope you enjoyed this how-to and burn demonstration.